Stand by now for the sixth performance of See It Now with Edward R. Murrow, which originates in the actual control room of Studio 41 and in New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Omaha, Chicago, St. Louis, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Washington, Covington, Kentucky, and Korea. <laughs> Alcoa, Aluminum Company of America, in cooperation with CBS Television, presents the distinguished reporter and news analyst Edward R. Murrow in See It Now, a document for television based on the week's news and told through the actual voices and faces that made the news. Edited and produced by Mr. Murrow and Fred W. Friendly. A public service of Aluminum Company of America, the nation's leading producer of aluminum. Now speaking to you from the actual control room of Studio 41 is the editor of See It Now, Edward R. Murrow. Good afternoon. We're aware that in the course of the last week, events of considerable moment have happened. The list of prisoners of war, speeches by statesmen, the tragic mine disaster in Illinois. There has been no decrease in the world tension. This is a period where many of us are disposed to count our many blessings and count them one by one. It's a time also when hearts are rather likely to turn to soldiers, to kids, and to home. For the next few minutes, we're going to look out upon this generous and capacious land as though we were looking out through a window. We will have a glimpse of those defending it, those who live here, and those who will inherit it, whatever we may do to it. So we will begin where we are, here in Studio 41 in the control room in the Grand Central Building in New York. Two of our cameras are 38 floors above this building in nearby New York Central Building Tower. Just to get oriented before we switch westward, let's look down on a bit of New York City. Hello, Ed. This is the mobile unit in the New York Central Tower. Our camera's are looking due north. Now that, that artery with the green island in the center is Park Avenue. Now, Eddie, could we have a shot of the Waldorf Astoria, if you please? There it is, Ed. Well, next week, we'll switch up there for uh, New Year's greeting from Mr. Ho Herbert Hoover. And now, uh, Eddie, could you reach over and get us the United Nations building on the East River, do you think? Uh, Ed, we're going to do that a little later. If you, uh, We'll have to take the Chrysler Tower first. Aha, uh -huh, too much haze. Right you are. Let's have the Chrysler Tower. Now, uh, can you reach the UN building now, Ed? Uh, yes, here, here it comes, Ed. Right you are. Thank you very much. We'll pan around New York a little bit later. And we'll also make a live switch to San Francisco. But now we should like to travel 5,000 miles past the Pacific coast to Korea. This next sequence was made above the 38th parallel on Wednesday and arrived here by air yesterday. The men are tankers of Able Company of the 23rd Tank Battalion. I shall remain out of this conversation because it requires no commentary from me. All I got to say about Colorado, there ain't no grass there. Yeah. No, it's all dry, cold. I, I, I like New Orleans. I, I'm going to try to go back uh, to, uh, on rotation. When I, when I rotate back. When's that going to be? Oh, that'll probably be about next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if I go home for next Christmas, I'm going to make it the best Christmas I ever had. I'm going to spend more time with wife and children. I want to, first thing I want to do is go down to the supermarket and pick out the biggest and fattest turkey they got there, you know. And get these cranberries and all that stuff, you know. All the trimming. Make the dressing and everything, you know. I then, don't blame you. And then I'm going to get in the car and I'm, I'm going out in the woods. I'm going to get the tree myself. You know, I ain't going to buy one of these trees. It's a lot more fun. You go out there and cut one down. You oh, know? yeah. Let the boys take part in. i got a couple of boys. One of them 11, another one 2. Is that right? Yeah, and they'll, they'll really get a kick out of that, you know. Going out there and picking it out yourself. Yeah. Get your own tree, that's Yeah. Right. We put the, put, the, put the base on it and all, you know, and then we... We'll spend about half the night trimming it, putting all these little different de decorations on it and everything, you know? If I was home for Christmas, I'd want a cake about this big and a steak about this thick. Better no turkey, boy? Yeah, no turkey. Yeah, it right, wouldn't be better than this. You don't know what Christmas is back in California. What are you talking about, man? I don't know what it is. I'd be swimming. Go to yeah, the beach. who wants to swim on Christmas? Swim on Christmas? Never heard of it. 
You don't know what a white Christmas is, boy. No, if I was in New York City for Christmas, man, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd get up in the morning about 8 o'clock and go to church. After church, I'd come back home and sit around for a while and get my girl and she and I go down and see the Christmas show at Radio City. Where? At Radio City. That's the largest theater in New York City, man. It's real great. Oh, yeah. And from there, we go out to some of the nice spots, you know, and have a nice time, such as the Wayside Casino. Yeah. Hillside Ball. Ball 55. Oh, man. Ball 55. Oh. You really have some nice times, man. Yeah. Number one. Good record, eh, Tom? Yeah, it sounds good even over here. You know, I have the same problem every Christmas. What to get the girl? You go and ask her, you know, just in a friendly sort of way, well, what would you like? And they always say, oh, I don't need anything, don't bother. You know if you don't get it for them, what the hell happens? No girl and goodbye, Jack. So first I go to my mother, then I go to her mother. And from about the 1st of December till the 25th, what shall I get and where will I get it and how will I get it? So usually, last minute shopping, the night before Christmas, I go out and pick up the first thing that comes to my mind. <laughs> Something I've been deciding on all along, but boy, I'm telling you, is it a problem? Although I wish I had that problem this year instead of just thinking about it over here. What do you do about a situation like that anyway? Well, boy, that problem really bothers me because I have a lot of gals there to give presents to. And the last minute comes, I just pick out one present and I, I buy them all the same, same kind of presents and I just distribute them all. Oh, that's one way of taking care of it. Now, Don, uh, will you leave Able Company up there on monitor one and give us San Francisco Live on monitor two? Hello, San Francisco. Hello, Ed Murrow. You know, we had hoped to switch out and look from the top of Coit Hill out to where uh, your ancestors used to watch the great clipper ships come in from the east, but I see that you've got uh, what appears to be a transport there. Is that right? Uh, yes, Ed, th this is the United States Naval Ship General Daniel I. Sultan, which is just this minute docked, and the men, as you probably can see, are coming off the ship itself. Well, could you chat with one or two of them, perhaps, as they come off? Yes, Ed, we can line that up for you. I think we can grab some who are already off. This is the uh, military ship. The Army takes over right after the Navy brings it here. This is Fort Mason in San Francisco, the port of embarkation. It's a little chilly today. The fog, I'm afraid, is a little thick. It's about 55 degrees. And uh, this town of 761,000 is welcoming thousands of GIs home in time for Christmas. Uh, we'd like you to meet one or two of them as they come off the ship. We've grabbed a few here. And uh, if you'd like, we'll talk to them for you. Good, Hello, let's do that. Sergeant Johnson and my wife. Where are you from? Uh, vale, Oregon. Where have you been? I've been in Japan. For how long? I've uh, been there five years. My wife's been there three. What did you miss most? I miss department stores. <laughs> Fine. How about you? Well, a good old American corner drugstore. About the best thing. Thank you very much. Let's talk to you, Captain. Would you come right up here so people can get a good look at you on television as well? What's your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Captain Devlin from uh, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. How long have you been over in uh, Korea? I spent 16 months in Korea. 16 months, where were you? Well, I was all over Korea. I mean, uh -huh. What do you remember most? Well, the, the most uh, thing that impressed me most, I guess, was uh, the first part of the war, the Busan perimeter. Thank you very much. And uh, Ed, we have one more here. Did you come up here? Who are you and where are you from? Harvard, Burma, San Diego, California. And you're a Navy chief? Yes. Thank you very much. Well, Ed, it was good to have you aboard, as always, Mr. Murrow. And uh, now, a very Merry Christmas from us here in San Francisco. Thank you very much, San Francisco. I can't think of anything we would rather have seen two days before Christmas than a troop ship coming home. The California coastline is about a thousand miles long, and there's as much difference between San Francisco and Los Angeles as there is between New York and Miami. Alex Wolcott once said that Los Angeles was seven suburbs looking for a city. That's perhaps a little strong, but we had difficulty in deciding where we should originate, so we chose Hollywood. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, New York. Hello, Ed Murrow. Go ahead, Hollywood. Well, this is Hollywood, Ed, part of the city of Los Angeles. Time, 1240, temperature, 68, population, over three million. We well, can't see downtown Los Angeles from here, Ed, but uh, we have a warm haze. But uh, my vision can pick up the heart of the entertainment business, and uh, that's our CBS building. Ah, uh -huh, I see that. Now, uh, look, since this is uh, Christmas, uh, let's make a generous gesture. Could you pick up the opposition, the NBC building around there somewhere? It's right.